WWE went and took off Paul's toys in NXT and yeeted them into free agency. But don't worry, Triple H, you still have some of your favorite toys for now. I know you ain't just here lurking. Subscribe to Pro Wrestling Vids. The WWE bloodbath continues, and don't get it twisted, it's all Nick Khan's fault. <laughs> no, but seriously, Vince McMahon and company are currently on an NXT rampage. Forget NXT TakeOver, this is NXT MakeOver, and it isn't for the faint of heart, as 13 NXT cuts were made this past Friday. Bobby Fish, Bronson Reed, Jake Atlas, Ari Sterling, Kona Reeves, Leon Ruff, Stephen Smith, Tyler Rust, Zachariah Smith, Asher Hale, Giant Zangier, and Mercedes Martinez for now. Sheesh! And this wasn't just a cost-cutting measure, but a seemingly ongoing NXT facelift as WWE changes its entire philosophy when it comes to developmental. According to Dave Meltzer of Wrestling Observer Radio, that philosophy is no more midgets. His words, not mine. Listen, I get WWE trying to go mainstream and stop falling to the mercy of the internet wrestling community. God knows I get that, and I'm all for it. But with such swift, sudden action to so many promising acts, WWE continues to confuse and alienate its own fan base on the heels of the beloved Bray Wyatt's release. As a rule of thumb, bigger has always more potential to be better in pro wrestling. But then again, look at Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, Jorge Masvidal, Nate Diaz, these are welterweights. They walk around at no more than 170 pounds and they do staggering numbers on pay-per-view. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yes, internet wrestling will always have a limited audience. So run like hell from that if you're trying to go mainstream. But star power comes in all shapes and sizes. NXT's releases come after undefeated top NXT star Karrion Cross lost to Jeff Hardy as its champion. And if that wasn't enough of a nail in his coffin, he messed around and lost again to Keith Lee last week. Huh. Keith Lee made history by becoming the first double champion in NXT once upon a time, only to get ravaged by Bobby Lashley in his return match. Huh. Despite WWE's return to touring, NXT remains in the desolate CWC with no announced plans for touring, and with less than two weeks until SummerSlam, WWE is just now maybe considering having a crowd for a loaded NXT TakeOver 36. Huh. With Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard's vision completely gutting NXT and rebuilding it in WWE's vision, this is starting to feel like Triple H is being sabotaged. Bronson Reed is fresh off of the biggest push of his career, and despite being positioned as a main eventer, his shocking release personified a clear message being sent to Triple H with tough love. This ain't your show anymore, pal. Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard's plans reportedly won out as WWE NXT moving forward will not be the super indie that endeared itself to a limited audience of hardcore fans. And while I can't do without all these releases, I have no problem with WWE no longer trying to out internet AEW. AEW is catering to the IWC better than almost anybody in wrestling history, so let them have the monopoly on the monolith. But with current and former NXT champions being embarrassed on Raw and NXT on the verge of becoming a shell of itself by design, is this Vince McMahon's passive-aggressive punishment for NXT losing the Wednesday Night Wars to AEW? Knowing that Triple H, the public-facing general, reportedly had nothing to do with any of these cuts, how can he then go to his troops and assure them that everything's gonna be alright? How can you assure them of anything with a straight face when it's becoming quite clear that these decisions, and for that matter this company, is now out of his hands? Triple H is still one of the heir apparent to the throne of WWE, right? Because if you're reading between the lines here, it certainly doesn't look it. Despite being a competent pro wrestling executive with a sharp mind for the business, Paul Levesque has been rendered a figurehead in NXT until further notice, all at the hands of his own father-in-law. How is WWE's boardroom drama more Shakespearean than the product itself? Why is WWE turning into succession? With NXT on fire in all the wrong ways, maybe it's time to just end NXT and replace it with a far more interesting reality show about the McMahon family drama. This is the NXT takeover that could outdraw AEW, the power grab behind the scenes. With more releases on the way and given some of the names that have been released in recent months, nothing would surprise me at this point. If you're one of the lucky ones who still gets to report to the CWC as an NXT superstar, my advice to you would be prayer. What do you think the future holds for NXT? Do you think it could recover? Let me know in the comments.